no, that, that means... Uh, oh, no, I was asleep for a whole nother year. Son of a dude, I swear. I was just going to rest my eyes. <laughs> no matter. Let me just... Uh, yeah. Yeah. There we go, that's better. Uh, now, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Bulldale. For everybody else, <coughs> welcome back. Now, of course, this means you have all come to hear a story, yes? Yeah! yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Ah, there we go, that's better. I believe you now. Let me see. You have all come to, to hear the Jungle Book, yes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. It's silly. <laughs> You have all come to hear the tale of a little princess. Okay, once upon a time. Yeah. What, what, what is it then? What story have you all come to hear today? Aladdin. Aladdin. Ah, yes. A what? Aladdin. Aladdin. I uh, I do not know that one. Like, really, I don't. I have never met any other. Uh, oh, I know. Let me look in here. You see, for every story I know, I tend to have one item which reminds me of it. Perhaps something will spark my memory. Ooh! No! Oh, Aladdin! Aladdin, at 
last I have found you. Who are you? I have been searching and searching for my dear nephew, Alvin, son of my brother Mustafa. I crossed the desert as soon as I heard he died. He died for you. Well, it is a very big desert. <laughs> and how is your dear mother? I do not want <laughs> Of course, this desert heatedness fried my brain. But it is no matter. I have found you. And do I have a job for you? Did your father ever tell you his brother is very rich? He not you can be a brother. I'm not surprised. We never did get along. Now, this is but a taste, my boy. A taste of the ancient king's treasure. Follow me to the cave in the desert, and you shall have more. More than you ever dreamed. Aladdin, you did not follow this strange old man, did you? He was a strange guy, he met on the Oh, go on. <laughs> So we went out into the desert and all the walked for three days and three nights there before you. Well, here we are. There we are. Here it is, boy, the entrance to the cave. Down there, you will find a treasure chest. And in that chest, a lamp. Bring me the lamp. Just the lamp, but I promise the rest of the treasure is yours. Why don't you get it yourself? Don't you think I would if I could? I need you. Why me? Uh, the, the, because, my boy, uh, you are special. You are the chosen one. When I asked the gods, if I cannot touch the lamp, who can? A voice said, Haladin, son of Mustafa. He is the key. A hero. A hidden gem. A diamond in the rough. No, it is true, my boy. Trust me, child. Sometimes it is the most humble, the most poor were the true princes of the world. Go, bring me the lamp and the treasure is yours. You will never want for anything again. You, a penniless orphaned child. How can you refuse? How could I refuse? So I turned and went to the cave. Remember, bring me only the lamp. So I went through this cave for some time, and that's when I got it. That's it? That's it. <laughs> He's still here? Waiting? Right now? I guess. Oh, for goodness sakes! What? That man is not your uncle. He tricked you. He did trick me. He tricked me. I was chosen. Ha! Chosen? Yes, chosen by him. And why you? Because it was a lie. I'm really my shepherd thing. Your deep privacy and thoughtlessness. I see past even your version of the story. You did not purchase food that day, you stole it. You did not give your house to starving children. You were fooled out of it by your partner in crime. Your uncle chose you because he saw you were a gullible thief. Who better than that than you get his land for him? No, 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 no. Moby was an exceptional child. Santa Cruz was an exceptional child. You are a lazy little thief. No excuse. Mowgli was just as virtuous, whether he was alone in the jungle or in the shelter of civilization. Santa Cruz was just as heroic, whether she was poor as a beggar or rich as a princess. I could change. People do not change. Look at me. Why does he want the lamp so bad anyway? What's so special about it? Oh, child's talk. Old legends. Fairy stories. What is it? Tell me. No, it is too stupid. Please. Please? Oh, must of There have been tales told, as far back as I can remember, of magic lamps which hold a spirit captive, condemning the spirit to serve whoever has possession of the lamp. And these spirits, in turn for their immortality, are doomed to perform magic to make true Whatever the masters ask of her, no matter how good or evil. Can I see it? No! Actually, no. Here, take the lamp, because none of that silliness is true. Take the lamp. It will give you a nice claim. That is all. Enjoy it. Wish for genies and wishes all you like. How do you make the genie come out? I don't know. Go ask your uncle. How does he get in there? Who says he has to live in it? How do you make him appear? I don't know. Have to rub it. 
like this. See? Eighteen bars. I know! <laughs> if it is the chosen one's touch, go ahead, grab it. You will see nothing will happen. desire. 
It could be very dangerous for a child to instantly have his every wish come true. But well, I won't wait for dangerous things. It is not that simple, Aladdin. Danger will find you. It already has. Grown men will fight each other to the death over this sort of thing. And uh, it is not just physical danger that worries me, it's uh, a spiritual. What do you mean? Uh, Aladdin, what is left to pursue oh if it is all handed to you at once? What satisfaction can you possibly feel in your riches if you have not truly earned them? If you truly wish to change your ways, like you said to be virtuous and heroic, like Mowgli and Sarah Cruz, this will not help. Why not? Because they were kind, brave, and heroic. Because they willed it to be with their actions, not their wishes. If, if your wish comes true, and you get us out of this cave, let us then bury this lamp right away and go our separate ways. What do you say? All right, I'll do it. Do you promise? I promise. Okay, good. Dee Dee? Yes, master. I wish I was going to be free from this cave and it's not home. Your wish is my command. Princess to me, <laughs> to everyone in fact. 
once upon a time, many moons ago, I was a young man. I lived in India. I was happy except that I was poor. Just like me. And without my parents. Just like me. Aladdin, see. Sorry, I <laughs> One day, a wealthy man from England named Captain Crew arrived in our village. He came to mine for diamonds in a cave in a nearby mountain. But he could not do it alone. He offered every able-bodied young man in the village a share in the riches if they would help him dig in the cave. So we went to work, picked away at that cave, and dug, and dug, and dug, until my hands blister and thought my arms would fall off. But we did not find any diamonds. One day, as all the others began to give up, the captain, mad with desperation, in the furthest and deepest nook of the cave, furiously began to make away at the earth by himself. At first, I felt sorry for him. But then, that same desperate passion I shared with this man swelled up in me. I wanted those diamonds just as bad. And so, I joined him. Until, the earth began to shake and cracks in the ceiling shot them over my head like lightning, and the mine began to collapse all around us. As the others ran for safety, I saw the captain was struck by falling rocks. So I ran right into the mine, pulled out his knees from the rubber, dragged us both to safety. For my brave. I was rewarded with the task of accompanying the captain back to England and nursing him back to health. You see, he received such a blow to the head that day that he lost his memory. Little did he know that right next door to where we were living was his poor little lost daughter in the school in which he left her before coming to India. Oh, little Miss Sarah. When I think of the poverty, the terrible hardship she endured was at that school. But one day, the captain miraculously remembered that she existed. And I'm happy to say I am also responsible for reuniting them. And in the captain's furious thing that day, they actually did find a diamond. This one, in fact. And they were rich after all. <laughs> but of course, they were rich all along. So how did you come to have it? Well, you see, the captain no little Miss Sarah could stand to even look at it. To think that the pursuit of the stone almost tore them apart from each other forever, the captain left it to me. And with it, I returned to India, the richest man in the village. But you did not sell it. I charged people to look at it and to listen to my story. You see, what a set of could stand to look at it, I could stand to part with it. It reminded me of her, her exceptional nature, her kindness to me and to others. Brave, excuse me for a moment. <laughs> In the face of evil, her optimism, even in the darkest of times, and the power of her imagination, even when reality was so grim. Well, for a long time, I rammed in the wealthiest man in the village. I had all the treasure I could wish for. At least, I thought I did. And I was happy. At least, I thought I was. Until I met a young boy about your age named Mowgli. Why did he make you unhappy? Have you heard of him? The boy in the jungle, everyone knows that story. Exactly. Suddenly, he was the most famous person in town. Not me. Everyone wanted to hear his story, not my own tales. When he emerged from the jungle and walked into our village, everyone wanted to meet him, including me, and listen to his story. But he had more than that story. Across his shoulder, he carried this. Wow. Exactly. Wow. But Mowgli did not see it that way. Having been raised in the jungle, he had no concept of treasure. This gold and these jewels meant nothing to him. To him, it was just a dagger. 
In fact, not even a dagger, just a big sharp tooth, as he calls it. So how do you come to have it? Well, when Mowgli showed this to us, myself and the other elders of the village began to argue over it. He wanted a piece of the treasure for himself. This poor child of the jungle, whom we thought would be the savage, so watched in horror. It's the first civilized men he met were now fighting like animals, ready to kill each other. Over a stone, suddenly Mowgli cried out, but not in a human voice. He howled as well as any one you've ever heard. And lo and behold, a ravenous one suddenly appeared, coming to his call, coming to his aid. We all fell to the ground in fear. And then, shame. As this child now stood over us and calmly held out his head. I quickly had to tell back the dagger. And he took it and gave it to his brother. Brother? Oh, don't worry. Ah, then what? He instructed his wolf brother to take the dagger, which clearly had a curse upon it. So he said, Far into the jungle and bury it. But you see, even though Mowgli was much wiser than us learned old men, he still did not understand. There was no curse on this. The problem was not with the dagger, but with us. Not with the treasure itself, but with man. What do you mean? Well, after that, I followed the host's footprints, and I found where he buried it. Then what? Well, I could not set this either. You see, it reminded me too much of this exceptional, heroic child with whom I crossed paths. Exceptional, like Sarah Crew, by way of his kindness, to the point of taming wild animals into friends. And his bravery, with the scaring of tigers, or the likes of greedy old men, like me. Well, for a long time I thought, that's it. There must not be any more treasure in the jungle. Or is there? The thought hounded me. There must be more. When he got that dagger into I could not take it anymore. So one night, I left everything behind and went into the jungle in search of it. I spent what should have been the best years of my life looking for that treasure. And I did find it, and here it is. But once I found it, I realized it was I who was lost. I dragged this stupid chest endlessly across the jungle, but I could not find my way home. My wandering eventually brought me into the desert, and finally into that cave where I remain alone, only to contemplate that all of my friends, all of my family, everyone I had ever known, and loved for God. Therefore. You showed them. And what about the lamp? <laughs> like I said, it was just part of the treasure. I never thought anything of it until now. You see, maybe you're right. Maybe genies do not just come from nowhere. Maybe they were once men, like me. Perhaps this is my cause, my punishment. And a fitting one at that. Just as I was once a slave to this treasure, I am now, well, a slave to this treasure, a slave to this love. Ha, that's some cause. You are powerful, Dini. You can make anything happen. <laughs> some power to make anything happen by only which a silly child commands. You mean by what I wish? Well, a wish for you is a command for me. But your wish is my command. Oh, must I say it again? What if I wish wish for something that you wish? What do you mean? What if I wish you free from the cause? Can you do that? You're the genie. No, I mean, can you possibly will yourself to do that? Why wouldn't I? Aladdin, if you set me free, then I am no longer a genie. I can no longer grant you wishes. Come on. Whatever. Aladdin, <laughs> this is an even better solution than getting the rat. You can set us both free from this curse. Huh? Aladdin, before you know it, your wishes will be commanding you. But I am not controlled by myself. Are you sure? All right, I'll do it. All right, that's the boy. OK, uh, I'm ready. Give it to me. Uh, this wish I would gladly grant. Yes, Master. What do you wish of me? What? I wish. Yeah. What? You wish. I wish. 
You wish to? Wait, no, no! I wish to. Anytime now! I wish to wish just one more thing and I'll say you feel. You wish just like a what? Just one more. One more, my foot, it will turn into hundreds, I know it! But, but what? That is not my wish. But do the treasure? Yes, of course, the treasure. Take it in, go to poor and get it. Perhaps, but time is running out. 
princess, it is time to return to the palace. Goodbye, spirit. Goodbye, princess. I thank you for listening. <laughs> Princess 
think it was your voice she heard? Jasmine, you cannot refuse this prince. Why not? Because! Because! <laughs> because you will give us both away. She will find out that I am a genie and you are not a prince. I do not want Papa's creepy little vizier to become sultan. I don't either. And I'm not going to marry a little boy. But she is not here in the I know her situation. I'm going to come get her out of the way and not marry her. Make way for the royal vizier. Ah. Princess, ah, forgive me for interrupting. I had heard you have company. Ah, uh, yes, you are, my royal advisor. We are met by yet another prince. Ah, another prince. I was certain the princess had refused every last one. <laughs> Where is he? Down here! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> a little young, don't you think? And what's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> Respect to the prince, I must advise against any more suitors. Sunset draws near. Are you sure you want to complicate this matter further? That is for the princess to decide. Jasmine, we have run out of time. <coughs> what is your choice? Royal Vizier Jafar or Prince Aladdin? <laughs> <laughs> You! You! You are the genie of the map? 
Yes, I am the genie, master. Excellent. Aladdin, I'm sorry, I cannot help you. He is my master now. Take him away. Lock him in the dungeon beneath the palace. Yes, yes sire. Oh, please, please, no, 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 please. Genie, come. We have much to do. Your wish is my command. And take the treasure. <laughs> yes, master. Yeah.
wish of me. Aladdin, what are you doing here? It is not safe. We are going to the doctor. But Aladdin, I cannot help you. He is my master now, and this auto is mine. And I looked up to the stars and cried out to the gods. If I cannot take the lamp, who can? 
and a voice answered in the dark, Aladdin, son of Mustafa, a lonely thief, a poor street orphan in Baghdad. Why a child of such poor quality, I asked. And the voice said, though he be poor, his heart is rich. Though he be a thief, he is willing to change. When put to the test, he will prove himself to be brave and kind. He is a hidden gem, a hero in a heroless time, a diamond in the rock. That. Well, something like that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is our song, where we
I go now to pursue further adventures and dreams. Then I hope you will as well. And you will, I can tell. <laughs> and so, best wishes to you all. And to you all, bye. <laughs>